Good morning and welcome back to the sacred grounds of Malta Archery. Thank you Danny for letting me still use the archery range. Today we have a review. I did the unboxing yesterday already, but not on video. From China, from UN2 Studios, from Mark Tom. I ordered some bows and I got some bows from him. This one is the Mongolian Takedown and we will check this one out today. And speaking of Mongolian, um, Melanie. Your Grosje Mongolian arrived yesterday too. And this will be then the next Patreon review. If my patrons want to have this Mongolian biocomposite. What we get for sure is a string and a sleeve. No documentation, nothing else. So, we know already how many points this will be. I tried to get some information on the website. Didn't work for me. I don't know why it's not working the website. So I had to go on the Facebook page of Mark Tom and see that I get some information there. And what I got is, so it's from UN, a Mongolia takedown laminated bow. Has a length of 45 inches or 115 centimeters. String length is 48, 122 centimeters. Poundage of this bow is 30. And he said that he can build it from 20 to 50, but I would be always careful with higher poundages and takedown. And the max draw is 30 inches. Then we have this thing with max draw recommendations. And I would go a bit more. This is again, looks like there's carbon on the outside. I would be always a bit careful with max draw recommendations and maybe not max it out all the time. So this is one part. And then you can have this in carbon. Normal, then it's $280 and in carbon fiber split. No idea what it means, but it's $20 more. So, that was something. So, look at this. Hmm. Hmm. So, what you get is a pair of limbs. They look very good. They have this carbon on it. And what I like is the finishing. When you see here the sears, I will show you the details how they are sanded and, and made. The finishing is really nice. Then we have this locking mechanism, which looks like a screw in this case. So you have here a metal plate and a screw, and here a metal plate, and here you have the bolt, so to say. It's a little different from all the others. They have these plug in and with a magnet or something. So he simply builds the bow, cuts it then, and I don't know, because even the leather wrap, we'll see. So important is that you can line it up. Oh. Doesn't line up completely. And that's a tricky part when you have a screw. It's not lining up. And then the bow is not straight. So we don't like this, I guess. This is... It's still not lining up, so I think this screw version. And you see the limbs are still not in line, so this is tricky. I would not recommend doing it like this because especially this, that this is one line is utmost important. I don't know what to do else now, I can't only. But <clears throat> doesn't get any better. <coughs> 55 inches from knock to knock. The arrow pass is out of ray skin, <coughs> which is nice, and has 24.5. I don't want to string this bow now. <coughs> really, I don't like to use that much force. One can see the longer one, so then the bottom one. Yeah, we have a nice description, 30 pound at 28, and the date is 11 7 2020 in some Chinese writing. So I made it now as straight as possible. Maybe it's not straight enough, we will see. But it's only 30 pounds, so should be not too big of a deal, but still, if the bow is not straight, I mean, what sense does it make, right? And you can build your limbs and whatever accurate as you want. 
Other than that, the handle feels good. It's a little bigger or not, I don't know. Need to test them with the other. I got two others, so we will test them. Then we see if the handle feels good. Is leather with a stitching. And the brace height, we don't know yet. But I tell you now, it looks like seven inches. And the weight, then you have the measurements all out of the way. Oh, you turn on again, that's nice. 470. Of course, it's a little heavier because of all the metal inside. It's very, very windy. So this is the bow. And I hope it's not straight enough. Yeah, it looks, it's, it's one millimeter off, so not a bit, but it's as close as I could do it. So let's see what will happen. You see the bow, you see me, and 30 inch max draws. 30 and a half. <laughs> Moment of truth. There, it gets a little stiff. So, nah, I would not draw this bow further than 28. And it's nice, but back there you feel then the draw curve going exponentially up. So, don't draw more than 28, maybe 29. So, let's first shoot the 300 grade. It's 30 pounds at 28, so. It's just fine, you have 10 grain. There is no hand shock. No vibration, but a center shot. And then we have, they are a little too long. They are the living arrow from Mihai Cosme. They are 350 or 80, I forgot. Oh, they are nice. This bow shoots nice. Seven inch brace set. Just feels nice. Cut rust ring twist, no problem. Then I have this one. This is 340 grain. Nice too. A little and a few bit nothing. So then we have these bamboo arrows. I just wrote the weight down, but I forgot it now. They are. I forgot. 400? I don't know. So the draw up till here is nice, and then you force the bow, which I don't like. Because I had yesterday a not so nice experience. But when you take your time, it works. And this is a 500 grain or something. I streamline from Alibo. Nice, so 30 inches, I don't know, 28 is nice, 29 is nice, 30 it gets already, don't, don't do it, let's see, at least 28, that you get something done today, so it's already at 0.3 again for no reason, 28, 28 pounds. Let's see how it looks at 28. <laughs> looks already. I would not go beyond 28 with this bow. You are almost at a string angle of 60 degrees. Don't draw more than 28. Then let's see with 10 grain what it does. Or a bit more than 10 grand. 135. 145. Needs a few shots and you get there. But I think you could shoot this bow with a little less arrow weight, so maybe 8 grain or something. 136. 140. So. We take it average of 140 for this bow. You can shoot more lightweight arrows, so you get maybe 160, 170 foot per second when you use more lightweight arrows, which I don't have here right now. With this bow, oops, upside down. You can, oh wait, that's a wrong arrow now. So, with this bow, of course, this handle is nice. 
you can do your Kasai style, this is no problem. You can even shoot this bow in three fingers. Look at this. Works. You can shoot this way around if you like to. Works too. It's a little more tricky, but it's normal. Overall, it's a nice bow. Takedown. Interesting. Curves are nice. See here until here, it's nice. And then the bow draw weight goes up. So I would not draw more. I don't know. Until here. It's fine, and then the bow does a nice job. But it does the job. And you start shooting groups, so the bow is very forgiving. Where you point, the arrow goes. That's nice, it's quite stable. Oh, we didn't do the wiggle test. Medium wiggly. And in this direction, due to the carbon, not at all. So wiggling, very good. And the bow still is okay, even if it's not completely aligned here. I don't know if you can see it, if it will focus now here. Still not completely aligned. I mean, I only can use this as an indicator, or maybe this one back there. Ah, that's why the hole is there. You have an indicator if you're in or not. But I don't see it because I don't have my glasses on. So you need to make sure that the bow is always really aligned. It makes it a bit hard for me, but maybe over the time it will start a little opening up and it works easier. So maybe out of the box is a little tricky, but you get there. So the solution with screwing it on, not my favorite, but it works. And then it's quite sturdy, so fine. And. not a lot and hand jog with 10 grains no problem at all so this is no big deal bow performs nice but still I feel the handle a little bending I thought because there is metal in it should be a bit more stiff but here you feel already the handle bending and this is this, this, this a weird feeling of ee, there's something going on and then you feel it when you let go but overall the draw now it gets a little more smooth so maybe we can do now a bit more. So out of the box, I would really not max this bow out. Maybe after several shots, the bow gets a little more smooth and you really need to feel it. So don't force this bow further back than it wants to go. Bamboo, 350 grain. Center. Almost center. off bad release so you need to have a good crisp release and a little cutter and a little string twist then these arrows fly nice so it's overall not bad start liking it a bit more yeah it's a nice bow took a few shots now it feels a 29 even nice so I shoot random arrows on 20 meters now. It's a Cosmi living arrow. Knocks solid, you can hear that. Bit too heavy, obviously. Yep, bit too heavy. The 500 grain wood arrow, even heavier. But you get there. The bamboos, nice, 350 grain. Ooh, left. Me high on 30. Yeah, a bit wobbly. This is a 340 grain on 30. Wobbly again. These are my old ones, 300 grain. Bamboo again on 30. I felt it. Yeah, you get there. 30 pounds, a little less for me, so, but for a beginner, no, I was center shot, a bit wiggly. For a beginner, and if you need a take down bow, it's not too bad. We didn't speak about the prices, 
pass we did 280 and 300 dollars but rating the packaging it's good packed but you get a bow a string and a sleeve and it leaves you with i forgot now it didn't do a review for a while bow string and sleeve two points the handling stringing so the screwing here together and lining it up properly is a little a pain in you know it might get better with time but i don't know right now this is a little bugging for me the rest stringing is easy the bow is very stiff so that's not a problem but this mechanism there are better ones out so this one is not my favorite and when you see then when you look at the close-up the leather is different so it's not that he built one and then he cuts through the leather this is a different grain of leather than this one this is more fine and this is a bit more pronounced so i don't know in details so but handling i give it a four because of this screw mechanism build build quality is very nice i said i like how he does the sears they're really nice send it down here you have a string guide and everything is really like a machine so there is nothing the ray skin is nice on it every transition here is nice and smooth overall it looks very good so build quality wise i can't complain at all you have this inlays here and everything is really like it's really like a machine so there's nothing to say only that we have these two different types of leather but i don't want to be now too harsh i give it five points for the build the basic feel was very weakly handled small big up to no weakly handle great balance so the handle feels nice the bow in this direction is stiff but in this it's very stiff so for this in this regards for the basic feel i have to give him five points the draw experience is and that's now the problem it's dated 30 inches but the bow doesn't at least right now doesn't feel like it wants to draw to 30 so 28 is nice 29 is now nice there is not really stacking but then you feel the draw curve going up and i'm i don't want to max out these bows because i don't know what they're going to do that's why for the draw experience overall is nice and if you would tell it's a 28 inch bow then it would say nice look no stacking you can go up to 29 but it's stated as a 30 inch bow and there i it feels already really the limit so i give it four points and the shooting experience on the other side is really nice the handle starts bending a little but you don't have a hand job of course i shot 10 grain arrows so with these ones you don't feel anything and vibration is minimal you feel it a little in the hand but only for four or five seconds so there's nothing major so in this regard it's very good i like the sear angle here this is really nice and you have a the overall sear angle is 60 degrees at 29 inches so it's performing wise nice it's not a speed monster with 10 grain and i guess as there is no hand choke you can go with eight grain and then even the speed is nice so handle feels good shooting experience the bow is you directly feel what the bow is going to do so you point there and the arrows go there so the learning curve for this bow is not very big for this i have to give it another five then we end up with a total of 15 and 10 is 25 out of 30. then we have 300 dollars for this bow with carbon which is first of all a matter of taste i personally don't like the last layer to look like carbon because it's a traditional bow it should be some either black or wood or you know what i mean but there are some people they like it and if you like that the last layer is carbon then you really will love this bow handle has nice uh, wood materials in it so that's all fine and the leather handle is fine that the thing is good 300 dollars it's an interesting bow for sure for me 30 if it's a very short bow it's it's only 40 55 pound uh, 55 inches from knock to knock of course it does then only 30 inches max which is always a little on the low side for me and when i can't 
at least max it out 30 inches, then the bow is not that usable for me. But if you have a short draw, and I have many of even my patrons, I draw 26, 27 inches, this bow performs really well, even on horseback. 30 pounds, you need more lightweight arrows, so you need to see how you do it on horse with stiff, sturdy arrows, but lightweight. But that's your problem, not mine. And then this bow performs nice, and I said it's a nice takedown bow, which is always, always beneficial when you need to travel, so you get it shorter. Then you unstring the bow, which is easy. And you have it here again. I mean, nice curves. Look at this. You have here really long sears. Bending section looks good. Of course, it's quite short, the bending section, but it's fine. And then you... Oh, yeah, yeah, this is... I don't know. The other solutions, you might want to check. They have a square shaft going in or with some some splint in it that, that the orientation is set and then at the end there's a magnet so they hold in place and once you stick them together and you string it look at this it's done this is a little i don't know what is going on really ah this came loose now that's why so your screw came loose it's it's not the best solution so for this even as a takedown and I think you don't charge more for a takedown, at least I didn't find any information on your Facebook page. This is, you know, and then you get dirty fingers. So this I don't like. So that's why I give it for the build a four, because this I don't like. We need to change that to four and then you get 24. So this is really not completely thought through. But then, of course, you have your takedown once you manage to unscrew this and get your fingers. You use the sleeve, which is a pretty sleeve, for cleaning your fingers. And then you have it in the same look and the same length as your arrows. And you can pack everything very small if you traveled. So this is nice. But I said I am not overly happy with this solution here. It's screwing on is really not the way to do it, I think, Mark. So don't be angry, but I think this solution can be different. Check what others do, check what Alibo is doing, or Marina, they, they have different ways and they work. You simply put them together with a magnet, they hold, you string the bow and it's fine and there's no problem. It doesn't have to be a screwed on joint. This is, let's see if it will line up now because I changed, I screwed the screw more in, but it's still, not lining up so i need to really force it again and that doesn't go at all so this screw mechanism don't do it and then you need to you know force the limbs now it's really off three millimeters so i don't think that this is the best solution that's why I think $300, then it's of course a nice bow. It's not the fastest. It's a beautiful bow, but with all these minor things that could be improved, I give it a four out of five. So it doesn't get the full points. It's not too expensive, but $300 is still a price. And then you have this hassle with this screw and the speed. The rest is nice and the max draw. I said I am still not comfortable drawing this bow 30 inches. Maybe we will get there over time. We will see. We will shoot this bow a few times. Maybe it gets more flexible. So this is this. We have two more bows to come right now from UN. The Xiaoming and the Han Chang. An early Mongol style. I didn't even talk about the design. So it's more like, you know, the UN. Like a Keshik. A short Keshik, so to say. And if you like a short casing with 28 inches, then this is fine. But this takedown version, think about it. If you don't need it, don't take it. If you need to have a takedown, take it and you need to live with this screw on that it works or that it doesn't work. So thank you very much, uh, Mark Tom from UN2 Studio for sending this post to me. I bought two of them and one he sent for testing, but I don't know which one anymore. You're on a good way, but there are uh, ways to improve and when you see you know these these small details here the leather 
Here it's rough and here it's fine. So at least take the same leather for one handle. That's all I have for you today. Luckily it stopped raining again. Thank you Danny that I still can use the range. And thank you all very much for watching. I catch you in